Hey everyone. Hey, look who I found. <laughs> Wandering the halls. And I thought, we should talk to our <laughs> folks. Um, um, we hope you are healthy, <clears throat> that you're safe, that you're not too frustrated. We <laughs> understand how frustrating this can be. And one of the strategies, yesterday was hard, something caught on fire on the stove. <laughs> I'm like, what's that I mean, smell? at this point though, I just, every day is just something. Just... We're gonna teach you what we know about resilience so you don't kill each other. Um, <laughs> th there's a little strategy I have whenever I go on a trip, really works in a pandemic. So whenever I go on a trip, like we went to Europe, yeah. probably not going to do that for a while. Um, I'm like, 10 things are going to go wrong when you go on a two-week trip to Europe. So just start marking them down. And, and don't get mad until... 11. Right. And it's a good strategy. I actually like that. And so four things went wrong. So I had no reason to be upset. Now you're in a pandemic and you have the kids and or you're alone. And it's like, you should just give yourself, give your partner, give grace. your children grace at least for one meltdown a week. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday there were meltdowns in my house, some of which I caused, but that's another story. Grace is so important. All right, so let's get to resilience. Tana was actually um, in an interview today. We're getting ready to do the marketing plan for her upcoming book, January 5th. Yes. The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. It's great. I'm so proud of her. And, and speaking of resilience, I think a lot of people who have been through a lot of things in life that have managed to come out the other side of it, um, you know, there's these built-in things we do that are resilience related and we don't even realize it. I know my nieces do the same thing. And this is one example. When I, when I would talk about the past and you're like, you need to write a book. And I'm like, why? This is not a big deal. Most, like everybody has this kind of stuff happen to them. Or my past wasn't that bad. You know, so many people have it so much worse. This is not that interesting. That actually turns out, I actually read a study that says that that's one trait of resilient people. They, it sounds crazy, but they have this tendency to go, stuff happens. What, this isn't that big of a deal in the scheme of things or compared to other people. And they have this tendency in their minds as a survival tool to sort of minimize it in a way, but more or less so that they can manage it, right? And so well, it's, it's an also a trait. trait of post-traumatic growth, which is if I can survive this, so if you can survive the pandemic of 2020 and mm -hmm. all the things going along with it, imagine what you can do. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is very important. In fact, one of my mantras, I remember it used to be when I was going through a really hard time, I had had surgery, a second surgery, and go, going through another treatment for the cancer while I was in nursing school. And it was really hard. I mean, I was just like, I was taking this crazy load trying to finish early and then that happened. And I just remember feeling like I wasn't gonna finish at one point, but I developed this mantra that it's like, it's only four more months. I can do anything for four more months. And as long as I could put a time limit on it, it's like, I can do anything for four more months. And then at the end of that four months, it's like, okay, well, I can do anything again for four more months. But mantras like that that were time specific for me were really helpful too. Well, and even with the uncertainty of the pandemic, it's going to be over. All of them are. Um, if you're thoughtful, if you're careful, um, it may only be a month or it may be six, whatever it is. How are you going to feel about how you acted? at the end of it. And when it happened, and it really affected Amon Clinics, as the CEO, I kept asking myself this question, I still ask it, is how am I gonna feel about myself in September? Yeah. Am I going to be proud of how I acted? Yeah, and that's one of the things we actually talk to the kids about. I'm like, so, you can't so control So mindset this. is so, Important. Right. And we told the kids the same thing. It's like, you get to, you get to decide who you're going to be through this. Are you going to be helpful or are you going to be hurtful? Are you going to be, you know, in control or out of control of your behavior? So that's number two. So the stuff happens. That was one, uh, where your attention goes, your energy flows. So what you focus on 
And so resilient people have this tendency to focus on the positive things that they can pull from a bad situation. Um, it's like, you'll, they often have this idea that I'm better because this happened or I'm a better person because of the things I've been through or, um, you know, those types of um, views on tragedy are resilience minded. So it's really interesting where your attention goes, your energy flows. And if you can focus on, well, maybe I can turn this like into something useful or this is happening for a reason or, you know, those types of things are putting your attention in the right place. So I love what you said, where your attention goes, where you bring your attention always determines how you feel. Mm -hmm. And Marty Seligman, he's considered the father of positive psychology. He talks about um, resilience. These are people when they come through a stress, they have TLC. They see it as temporary, not going to last forever. I can like handle anything said. for four months. Local. It's not everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, we're in a global pandemic, <laughs> but what that. happens in Orange County is very different than what happens in LA. And it's very different than home. happens in New York and right. very different happen on this street versus that street. So it's temporary, it's local, and it's changeable mm -hmm. that you can have an impact. And that's what I talked about last night with protected group immunity. You and your family can do very specific things as opposed to we're gonna wait for a vaccine or we're gonna wait to see if remdesivir or hydroxychloroquine or whatever um, is gonna save us. What is it you can do? Temporary, local, changeable. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, and then I love your question. I learned this from you, then what? So. If you can keep your mind focused, then what means that you're focused on how is my behavior going to affect my situation or my, my thinking? Um, is it going to, is my behavior going to get me what I want? If I do this, then what? So another way to say that is, is my behavior getting me what I want? So is this good for my brain? Is it bad for my brain? Is this good for my body or bad for my body? So then what? So that means you're actually kicking in your frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. And we had a discussion today with the two older uh, kids, uh, Chloe, who's 16, Michael, boyfriend is 17. And they've been together like a year. No, a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. And so they began and who knows what's going to happen, but they were talking a little bit about child rearing and I'm a child psychiatrist. So I tried not to say much until I heard bear the rod and spoil the child. And I'm like, uh oh. And so I actually did research. And that's a on, common thing people think though. I did research on, cause people think that's biblical. That's actually not biblical. That verse is not in the Bible. It was actually from a poem by Samuel Butler talking about two lovers, talking about the gruesome things they were gonna do to each other. And um, it was very it interesting. Morbid. And so I went to the verse in Proverbs and it talks about not disciplining a child means you hate the child. And they use the word rod, but like a shepherd has a staff or a shepherd has a rod, it doesn't beat the sheep with the rod. What it does is it guides the sheep with the rods. So if you want to be effective as a parent, yes, you have to discipline children. If they started cursing at town, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> there would be consequences. Um, but when you're frustrated, ask yourself, then what? Is this going to help me raise a healthy child? a child that feels good about themselves, a child that is a productive member of society, or am I going to scare the child into behaving? Right. And it's just not effective 
So when you're angry, your <clears throat> voice should go down. And what did Love and Logic teach you when you got angry? What did you Never say? Never discipline when you're angry. So actually, you, what you would say is there are going to be consequences. I'll let you know what they are when I've had time to think about it. So buy time. And so... And Chloe hated that. She hated it. She was so <laughs> would rather me just do something in the moment. She hated the time in between when there was this thinking process and quiet. Yeah. So, exactly. All right. And the last one is pain to purpose. Well, I have one more after that. Oh, well, good. So, pain to purpose. We talk a lot about pain to purpose, but people who are able to take tragedy and turn it into something purposeful not only live longer, but they're happier. And so, we always want you thinking... Yes, you can't control, you know, some of the things that happen in your life and adversity comes for everyone at some point. Adversity doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter what color you are, how old you are. At some point in your life, adversity comes. And so having the mindset that I know it's going to come at some point, things are going to happen that, I'm, that are going to be hard, but I can use those things and be purposeful with them. So... That is so important. What has the pandemic taught you? Patience. It's going to be okay. Do what you can do. And the last thing when it comes to resilient people is a concept I call brain reserve. Mm. It's how much extra brain tissue do you have to deal with whatever stress comes your way. And when we're born, if our moms were good to us, when the, we were in their womb, we we're actually born with a lot of reserve. But then life steals it. I mean, what you see is the older you get, the less reserve you have. Um, if your parents fed you bad food, if you fell down a flight of stairs, if you played a contact sport, if you had an alcoholic father, or mother, worse actually, if it's a mother, then it's stealing yeah. your reserve. So an example I, I like to give is take two soldiers. I was an army psychiatrist. Take two soldiers, put them in a tank, expose them to the same blast, the same angles, the same force, everything's the same. One of them walks away unharmed. Mm -hmm. The other one's permanently disabled. Why? It depends on the brain they brought yeah. into the accident. And the people that will thrive through the pandemic, it depends in part on the brain, the physical functioning of your brain that you brought into the pandemic. Right, and that's... That should make sense if you think about it. Why are so many people right now so focused on building their immunity? Because they know they're less likely to come down with COVID if their immune system is strong, correct? So we're taking supplements, we're doing all these things, we're doing more things than we, what, the things we should always be doing, but we're doing them more now because we have a reason to be fearful. So it stands to reason that that works physically, then wouldn't it stand to reason that it works mentally? So wouldn't it stand to reason that doing those same things, building that reserve, for, with your brain would help protect you from, you know, the psychological aspect of trauma. Well, and we think of resilience in four circles. We always talk to you about our four circles. So there's biological basis for resilience. And in the end of mental illness, I talk about the bright minds risk factors. So there's a biology to it. There's a psychology to it, much what you're talking about. There's a social circle. So if you are spending time with people like Chicken Little, where the sky is always falling and everything is always awful and you're texting the latest conspiracy theories back and forth and you're just constantly upset, it's not going to be helpful. And there is a spiritual circle, mm -hmm. which is why the heck do you care? What, what is your deepest sense purpose. of meaning and purpose? Why do you want to be better in September than now? And what are the things you can do? Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, thank you.
<laughs> so hopefully you guys are doing well. You are resilient and uh, managing the pandemic. And I don't know if your house is as crazy as ours, but at some point you just got to laugh. Diane writes, my heart goes out to those uh, children stuck at home in abusive situations. Yeah. It horrifies me. I worry about that every day. Yeah. That, you know, after a pandemic, there's a much higher incidence of post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. which is why we're here for you uh, to bring you some sanity. Not that I'm actually going to claim sanity, but... <laughs> Not in this to... house. <laughs> But um, our prayers are with you. We hope you have a great evening. Thank you.